Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. Thanks for tuning in and happy Friday. Today we're going to take one step further in our discussion of Delta and Vega and the relationship. So a few days ago I covered the relationship between Delta and Vega. We covered the basics of Delta and Vega and how it has some synergistic properties with put options specifically, how it can accelerate profits because of their relationship, and how it can, it can accelerate losses as well because of that. But we're going to take a different side of that relationship today and we're going to discuss talking about short vega and having short delta and how the two act as a natural hedge. So we're going to talk about first what we're talking about with delta and vega altogether. What are some things I need to be concerned with when I'm long delta or short delta and also long delta and short, I'm sorry, long vega and short vega. So let's get right into it and we'll start this discussion here. So when we're looking at portfolio exposure, there's a couple things that come to mind when we're looking at trading options specifically. So there's two things that we have when we're looking at options. Number one is going to be directional risk. And we refer to directional risk as our delta exposure. So when I'm long delta, my, my risk is to the downside. When I'm long delta, I have a positive delta value. And knowing that delta is just the rate of change of an options price given a $1 increase in the underlying, if the underlying increases, and I have a positive delta, then my position should increase in price as well. So some popular bullish or positive delta strategies might be something like a short put or a long call spread or a long call diagonal spread. Anything that yields a positive delta is going to be beneficial if that underlying goes up. So for that reason, my risk would be to the downside. If I have a positive delta and the underlying actually decreases in price, that's going to decrease the value of my position and put myself in a losing position overall if it continues to go down. So when we're looking at situations where I'm long delta, it's important to remember that my risk is to the downside. Now on the flip side of that, if I am short delta, some popular short delta strategies might be something like a short call spread or maybe a long put diagonal spread or a poor man's covered put as you might hear it. Basically what we need to know is that when I have short delta, my risk is to the upside. So if I have a negative delta value and delta is the rate of change of an options price and it's looking at an increase in the price, if I have a negative delta, then of course, if the price does increase, it's going to decrease the value of my position. So what I want to happen is actually, I want that underlying to go down in price. So if I have a short delta, I am bearish, and I want the underlying to go down, which means that my risk would be to the upside. Basically just the opposite of having long delta, where I'm bullish, and I want the underlying to go up, my risk would therefore be to the downside. There's another aspect of options that we need to consider, and that would be our volatility risk. And we looked at we like to look at Vega when we're looking at volatility risk. So Vega is very similar to Delta in the sense that it's a metric that looks at a change in the underlying volatility. So instead of the underlying's price, we're looking at a change in the underlying's volatility. So with Vega specifically, we're looking at a 1% change in volatility and how that affects the options price. So if I have long vega, then my risk would be if there is an IV contraction. If I have long vega or a positive vega value, I actually want implied volatility to increase. So a popular long vega strategy might be something like a calendar spread, which is a pure implied volatility play where we're purchasing a long option and selling a short option in a near term month against that. And we want implied volatility to expand and we want the underlying to stay right around that same price. Similarly, a long a Vega position might be something like a long call diagonal spread or even a long put diagonal spread. Both of those would increase in value if we had an IV expansion. So if I know that my position would increase in value if I had an IV expansion, that must mean that my risk would be if there was an IV contraction. And just like here where the opposite is true for short delta and long delta, it's very similar here when we have long vega and short vega. So long vega positions are going to be anything where we're long an option or we're long that spread. Basically anything where we're usually paying a debit is going to yield a long vega position. On the flip side, 
a short vega position is going to be something when we're selling a position. So anything like a short put or a short call or an iron condor, which is delta neutral, but it's still short vega because we're selling that premium. So for most strategies, a quick rule of thumb is that when we are paying a debit, we're usually going to be long vega. And when we're collecting a credit, we're usually going to be short vega. There's some variations when we get into a little more complex strategies, but for the basic ones, that's pretty much rings true. So if I know that I'm short vega, and if I want the opposite to happen from the long vega example, if I'm short vega, I want an IV contraction to happen because that would that would make my position more profitable. So if I have short vega and a 1% decrease in implied volatility happens, that's going to be beneficial for me. So if I know that a contraction is beneficial, then that must mean that my risk would be if there is an IV expansion. So we understand these things. We understand what, we, what happens when we're long delta and short delta and some strategies that are examples of that and also long vega and short vega and we gave some strategies for that. But let's say I'm trading and most of my portfolio is made up of short options where I'm selling premium because we know we love that theta decay effect that we have and also that potential implied volatility overstatement where we're collecting more than maybe we should for an implied move. So let's talk on the next slide and we'll talk about some of the things that we need to think about when we're looking at a primarily short premium portfolio. So if I've got a short premium portfolio or a short option portfolio primarily, then what's going to happen is I'm going to have a lot of short vega. So as we saw on the previous slide, if I'm selling a lot of premium and I'm compounding that short vega risk, my risk is if an, we have an IV expansion. So what can happen when we have an IV expansion? Well, if I have a lot of short premium and there's an implied volatility expansion, if we understand that part of what implied volatility does is really just give us an idea of what the options prices are doing, if implied volatility is increasing, that usually tells me that the option prices are increasing as well. So if I sold premium at this level and option prices are now at this level because we see implied volatility increasing, then that's going to be that's going to put me at a loss. If I'm selling something here and I have to buy it back here to close a position at a higher price, that's not going to give me a positive P&L. It's going to show me a, a net loss on that position. But regardless of direction, an increase in IV can hurt my portfolio. So even if we're talking about being having a bullish assumption on the market or having a bearish assumption on the market, when we're selling premium primarily, we're going to be exposing ourselves to that short vega where we have that risk to an IV expansion. And as we know, as we've seen from drastic market downturns like in last July or August where we had a pretty significant downturn and we saw volatility explode to the upside, it's something that we want to be able to hedge. So we don't want to be able to, we don't want to give ourselves that full vega, short vega exposure. We don't really want to put ourselves in a position where if volatility explodes, we might be at uh, in, a bad, in a bad spot. So what can we do to hedge against this? Well, we talked about the previous relationship of a put option where delta and vega work synergistically. So a long put has a negative delta. It benefits from a decrease in the options price. And if a decrease in that underlying price happens, usually we'll see implied volatility increase. So both of those things work together to help speed up those profits, but it can also work to speed up those losses if it moves against you. But what about the call side? What about a short call? And we're gonna talk a little bit about that today. And we're gonna look at having negative delta and coupling that with negative vega. So on the next slide, we're gonna break this down a little bit for you. And we're gonna talk about what we can do. So we know that we have short vega and we have an IV expansion risk if we're selling premium primarily. So one thing that we can do to help offset this risk is hedge it by having some short delta. So if we remember that when we have short vega, an IV expansion is our risk. We're really looking for an IV contraction. Now if we think back to a few previous whiteboard segments where we talked about the relationship between volatility and the market, 
We know that in general, when a market is increasing in price, we usually see volatility decrease. That's because most of the world is long. So if we're seeing an underlying price increase, a lot of people are complacent with that. No one's really worried. And you don't really see too much option buying happening. Whereas the flip side, if the underlying is decreasing in price, we generally see implied volatility increase. And that may be because people are starting to speculate for further downside moves, or they're looking to hedge their positions. In any case, there's a lot of option buying going on, which is going to increase those option prices and therefore increase implied volatility. So if I know that short delta benefits from a price increase, and I know that if I have a lot of short premium, and I'm going to give myself exposure to that Vega risk by having that short premium, if I know that an underlying decrease in price can expand implied volatility, which is inherently bad for my short position, what I can do is make sure that I have a little bit of short delta because that's going to benefit from the price decrease. So remember, if I have short delta overall in my portfolio, if an underlying or the market takes a dive, and implied volatility increases, if I have short delta, my directional profits will help offset any Vega exposure or any losses I might see by increases in volatility. So if I'm holding a short delta on my entire portfolio, if the underlying goes down, of course, if I have a short delta, that's good for my positions. Although we do see that when an underlying goes down, implied volatility can go up. So if I'm holding a lot of short premium, an increase in implied volatility is not gonna be good for my position. So instead of thinking of delta and vega from the put side like we did a few days ago where we looked at accelerating our profits or possibly accelerating our losses, when we're looking at the relationship between delta and vega from a portfolio management standpoint, it makes perfect sense to hold a little bit of short delta to offset our short vega risk if we're having a portfolio that is made up of a lot of short premium. The two help hedge each other, and because of that, they work pretty well together when we have that combination. So if we're talking about short delta and short vega when the underlying goes down, we can also think about it if the market goes up. So if we know that when if a market goes down and we normally see volatility expand, if a market's going up, we'll normally see volatility contract. So since I'm short a lot of premium, I would probably see a nice profit from my vega my implied volatility decreasing, which is going to inherently decrease the prices of those options. And if I'm holding short delta, sure, that's going to not help me directionally, but the two, again, help to benefit and hedge each other. So this relationship here, having short vega and short delta, is going to help us overall from a portfolio management standpoint. We actually did do a study, it was a great market measure, where we looked at the S&P 500 and we compared it to its volatility indicator, the VIX, and we looked at what sort of ratio we might want to understand and look at when we're deploying this sort of portfolio management. And what we found is that if we have a two to one Vega to Delta ratio, so if I look at my Vega exposure, divide that by two, and I carry that much short Delta, it's a nice starting point to help me understand and deploy a nice defense mechanism from a portfolio management standpoint. One really important aspect to remember though is that Delta does change. So as markets move, Vega is going to change as well, but it's not going to be as sensitive as Delta. So although we can deploy a two to one Vega Delta ratio at first, when markets move, we're going to have to adjust our positions to continue to have that two to one ratio. We might see a market go up or down, which is going to change our delta, and therefore going to change our ratio that we have here. But the segment is actually a market measure. It's called Understanding Vega. So if you wanna check that out, I definitely recommend it. But this has been it. This is short delta, short Vega. It's just another way to think about the relationship between the two Greeks. But let's wrap it all up with some takeaways for you. The very first takeaway we've got is that selling premium does expose us to short Vega risk. As we know, when we're selling a lot of premium, an implied volatility increase is going to be bad because it generally indicates an increase in those option prices. And also, we can see that a market decrease can generally re result in an increase in implied volatility. So holding those short Vegas, if we couple it with having that short delta, it's a great way to initially help defend our portfolio. 
And lastly, if we look at that two to one ratio, it can be a great starting point, but do remember that delta does change. So as the market moves around, we're gonna have to manage that ratio and maybe adjust some of our positions to do so. So thanks so much for tuning in. My name is Mike. If you've got any questions or feedback, shoot me an email here, or you can follow me on Twitter at DoeTraderMike. Stay tuned, we've got Jim Schultz coming up next, and have a great weekend.